my YouTubers, while I was waiting and waiting and waiting for the numbers to start going here to tell me that the film was rolling and I hadn't turned it on yet. Oh boy, I tell you. Uh, it's one thing to get dumber, but to get used to being dumber, that's a hard part. Well, here's chapter five. It starts out with the, with the, the U.S. Constitution and all the things you need to know. Um, okay. Chapter five. C. When to plant and when to harvest. 2005. Hot smoking to the elderly. By Nanette Berlin Norman, your social, philosophical, poetic commentator. Those in need, indeed, never go without. See the medical marijuana creed. There it is. Take a look. Right out of my book. The med pot creed. That's what it's called. Those in need, indeed, never go without. See, it's the medical marijuana creed. One thing we know for sure, our magic cannabis seeds do not come from Wally World, or the health food store, or the drug store. They ought to be in the health food store, too. The seed companies of Amsterdam and Vancouver would love to get their cannabis seeds standardized so they can join the robust line of uniformity. They have been working on it since the 70s when the hippies left Woodstock to make their round-the-world trek to check out recreational drugs and the habits of the masses. They came back with seeds from around the world. They gave them fun names and guessed at what they do when planted in hot and cold, high and low places. So now I think, like the Hawaiians, they've been mixed with all the exotics and no one has any idea what the seeds will do. My friends who like to plant seeds prefer to try some from different contributors at the same time for the variety of taste, always pulling nails to keep her buds virgin. Some of my friends never mess with seeds, um, only clones. Page 71, Hot Smoking for the Elderly. Uh, here's a bunch of babies trying to get started. And 72, 72 says, uh, I know nothing of clones except what I do to the hibiscus bush when I want another plant. I just cut off a branch that's got the bloom I want and thrust it in the ground or the rock and a crack in the rock or a pot of soil. I have great luck with tea and gardenias and hibiscus, but uh, cannabis, uh, my friends love the commingling taste of a bag of buds of several different looking plants. My friends would ask their doctor if there is a seed bank to get a variety, something different than their neighbors. I've never heard of anyone paying for seeds, but I'm reading about it in a Vancouver magazine. Well, I've learned a lot about all kinds of things since 2005. It's amazing how um, interesting this reads now. The seed you find should be not hemp. And I don't know what that looks like. Hemp has a very low THC content, a waste of valuable time and space. If you want the THC to help you in your medical needs, do not accept hemp as just as good. Uh, the seeds should be fat, shiny brown, with flecks of black. If they tell you you have sativa, uh, you may get tall, willowy plants. If they tell you you have indica, you may get short, stubby plants with few branches. And then again, your seeds could be punico, which is Hawaiian style and the ultimate in home care. Those in need indeed never go without seed. It's the medical marijuana tree. 
I think in fiction, I write in fiction, I am a product of fiction. All my memoirs are fiction, Oprah, all my memoirs are fiction. Who ever heard of factual memoirs? Memories are wisps of tiny stones. That's incredible. Well, here's a bunch of babies looking at it. Hanging out in the sun. Waiting to get done. What next? You found some seeds? What next? You could start out your new plants in a small pot. Before they outgrow the small pot, you should transplant them into their permanent pot. This pot should be to hold only one plant and be as big as you can get it. Some think the plant can only spread out as far as her roots can take her, so you need a fat pot. Some think she has a long, strong tap foot, so you need a tall pot. Some would never use bags because you can't move your plants in bags, and for some reason, all the women I know that are growing prefer to move their pots around the house to keep themselves company, I suppose. Men seem to want to plant them out there somewhere and forget till it's time to harvest. Ask yourself, am I going to move this pot after I put my pot in it? Some of my fellow growers move their pots around to agree with the sun, the rain, and the helicopters. So, uh, find a pot you can get your arms around and buy a bunch of them. Now, some of my friends put a layer of cinder in the bottom of the pot. Uh, then they mix a half a bag of potting soil, a quarter bag of compost, and a third of a bag of chicken shit in a wheelbarrow with a hole. They use bagged dirt they know and can trust not to burn their plants. It's pH balanced, sterilized to be weed-free, and lots of good stuff in the compost. I mean, after all, uh, if you're going to smoke it, you want to be fussy about what it grows in. Uh, if you're going to eat it, the same thing, you know, uh, there is a, uh, uh, that's what farmers are all about. They add enough water to get it all damp, not soggy, and leave it overnight to blend flavors. In the morning, they add the dirt mix to their pots and water till they see the water come out the bottom hole. Now they allow the pots to settle overnight. Page 73, a pot smoking for the elderly. And here's a picture of little, little girls coming up in the world. And this page is 74 and it says, When to plant your seeds. Does Mother Nature pick a day? How about the Old Farmer's Almanac? Then there's the local green book and a thousand books at the library and the bookstore to tell you how to do it. Of course, I have my ideas. Since we're out here in the jungles of Puna, a natural rainforest at about 1,000 foot elevation, we have a unique situation on growing everything. It ain't easy. The mold and the uh, bog is very poisonous. Unless you are growing something that the bugs, the birds, the cats, the dogs, the pigs, the butterflies, the mice, the rats, the mongoose, and the neighbors, not to mention the federal government don't want, then the gnats want it and you're back to square one saying, I thought this was paradise. Just stick it in the ground and it'll grow. Well, that's fine if you don't care, like the hibiscus and the tea and all those ones that, you know, do this great. And if they don't and get all black, you can just throw them away. And get, I mean, it's just so simple if it's simple. But let me stop ad libbing here and read. Um, they're easy. Or a new hibiscus bush. Just stab it in the ground between rocks, but try and grow the important veggies. First time the critters tune in. The second time they beat you to the food. The vegetable market at the side of the road 
solved that problem, but how did they do it? You understand, Tony? Our enemy used to be DuPont and Hearst, and now you wonder, it's a Fox News and Monsanto? <laughs> Uh, thinking logically, I think, that the growing moon would pull the growth up out of my seeds, so I plant two days before the new moon. Some like to plant two days before the full moon also. Looking at the tide, ca the tide calendar, uh, you can see that there is a high tide twice a month. Uh, since they pop up in two or three days, oh, we've got a, uh, oh, how are we with time now? We are, did it again. This is incredibly bad, bad, bad.